Hello, and welcome to Metalcast by Metal Coffee Shop. My name is Karen Edwards, and joining me on today's episode is Keith Dietzen of Smart Build Systems. <laughs> welcome to Metalcast, Keith. Thanks. Nice to be here, Karen. Yeah, so I'm really excited today to talk about uh, just exactly what Smart Build Systems is and what you guys do. But first of all, just introduce yourself to our listeners. Tell us a little bit about you and your background. Sure. My name is Keith Dietzen. Uh, I'm the owner, CEO of Smart Bill. Um, but our but my history in software development goes back quite a bit further. So the the parent company of Smart Build, Karen, is, is Keymark Enterprises, and I'm an old guy. I founded Keymark way back in 1975, and we were something of a pioneer in in terms of writing software for the construction industry, the residential and like commercial construction industry. So over the years, we wrote software. Uh, for the wood truss industry. Uh, we, during the 1980s, we wrote the first ever program for engineered wood products. And uh, so we've been in business since 1975. Um, and then I, I decided to start Smart Build as a company, as a product uh, about seven years ago. So anyway, my background is, is one in, in software and automation. And that's always what's kind of driven me and, uh, and so our team sizes have varied over the years. Uh, we were at one point about a decade ago, uh, an 80 person company. And uh, I sold uh, our, the, wood, the wood software divisions we had at that time to Simpson Strong Tie, who was a leader in um, the manufacture of hangers for uh, wood, the wood construction end of the business. And as I said, looking around for other, other applications um, about seven years ago, um, I decided to start up Smart Build. Originally, that wasn't to address roofing. The original uh, purpose of Smart Build was to develop a software program that would be a presentation tool and a takeoff and pricing tool for the post frame industry. Okay. And of course, the post frame industry uh, uses metal panels right. for, the, for the sheeting material, both for the roofing and for the walls. And uh, so we were involved in that effort for, gosh, three, four years uh, before we met Mark McDonald of um, Sherwin-Williams. And, and he sought us out uh, because of our reputation in the post frame industry. And he'd been, he'd been, he'd talked to some of his larger metal panel manufacturing companies who suggested that we would be a good partner in the roofing passport because our software was being so well received in the post frame end of the business. So, so that kind of gives you a little background of where sure. we came from, you know, but, so we had a long, long history of writing software, uh, but uh, what it was really punctuated here over the last seven years when we got involved in the, this industry segment that uh, has several niches that are being addressed by people who manufacture and use metal panels. Right, right. So yeah. you you mentioned briefly the roofing passport. Um, mm -hmm. That is a program that Sherwin-Williams has put together um, to help contractors add metal to their business and grow their metal business. Um, so you are a key role in, in helping contractors. You mentioned takeoffs, bids. Tell me a little bit more about how that works. Sure, sure. Well, uh, so that's a, uh, yeah. So anyway, so we, we got our start when, when Mark approached us and, and said, hey, we're putting together this roofing passport system. And uh, you might know the, uh, the history of that and the purpose behind that, but I'll just kind of recount a little bit sure. for your listeners, Karen, because what, what Sherwin-Williams as a paint company had determined, and they put a lot of resource into this, did research. Their goal was, of course, as a business to increase their paint sales, their coating paint sales. And, and that, that, that material, that paint goes on these metal panels, right? 29, 26, 24 gauge panels that are manufactured all over the country. And anyway, what they determined is that the way that they could really uh, facilitate the growth of their, their, the metal panel sales was to make it easier for people offering metal roofing or for roofing contractors to bid re-roof and original roofing jobs uh, using metal panels, okay? So what they observed is that where, you know, the, the majority of residential roofs use asphalt shingles, mm -hmm. and of course they wanted the metal to get a greater share. What they observed is that um, asphalt shingle roofers could, could very easily do pretty accurate bids 
if they just had geography, the geometry for a roof, okay? And there's a variety of ways they could go about getting that geometry. Go out and measure on the site. There are a number of other tools that could be used. The dominant and then probably the best technology in that whole industry for getting geometry information on existing roofs has always been Eagle View. Eagle View is the runaway leader. They have great technology, patented technology, and their own fleet of airplanes, and they can generate very accurate geometric information on an existing roof. Okay. Now for an asphalt shingler, that's about all they need. You know, they give them the number of squares on a roof and and you know what, they're off to the races and they can just throw a number at it and that's good for their bid. Well, what Sherman Williams had observed is that with, with metal roofing, of course, there's, it's much, much more involved. First, there's more precision required in figuring the metal panels and trim pieces, okay? Right. So it's, it's much more nuanced. And, and there, are, there are a lot of pieces and parts that go into it. So there are the metal panels themselves. They have to be uh, manufactured to specific lengths. There are various types of trim pieces depending on the part of the roof, and they'll vary in terms of cost, and they'll vary in terms of manufactured length. And then there, there are adhesives, closure material, clips for standing seam roofs, screws that are happening. So the bottom line is that it's much more difficult to get an accurate bid because the yeah. process is much more painstaking. It's not and as so forgiving as asphalt, it sounds like. No, it's not at all. You can't, you can't be, you know, the old things about, you know, close being good enough for horseshoes. Well, well, you can be off in a metal panel bid. And, and, and if you do that, you might lose your shirt. Right. So, so what Sherman Williams wanted to do was, was to say, well, look, there's technology out there that can generate, generate accurate uh, geometric information for a roof. But then what we want to do is automate this process of getting those materials right. And, and for, to get an accurate uh, metal panel re-roof bid, really required an expert, a roofing contractor who was expert in doing that. And it would still take a very long time to do it. It might take an hour to a couple of hours of figuring those materials. So what Sherwin Williams wanted was a software program that could automate that process. And be, again, as I said before, because of the success we had with metal uh, panel applications in the post frame industry, they approached us and said, hey, would you like to be a, a, at least a candidate Right. Uh, to be the company who would write software that would, would that would automate that second part of the process. And long story short, you know, we went through a vetting process with them and they decided we were the best candidate. And uh, so this goes back three plus years ago. And so when we started on the task, we rolled up our shirt sleeves and uh, worked together with uh, a number of companies, including metal panel, panel manufacturers and uh, roofing contractors and, and wrote uh, the part of the roofing passport today that is that is smart build for metal roofing. Okay, so, so, we, it, so we, yeah. it sounds like they, Sarah Williams approached you, you had a, 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 a solution that was doing really well in post frame, and then you kind of adapted it and tweaked it so that it's working for metal roofing as well. Is that kind of what I'm hearing there? That's exactly right, Karen, yeah. Yeah, so we had a great head start, to put it a little bit differently, right? So we yeah. already had, we already had base software that would say, okay, we had our own 3D modeling program in post frame because, of course, you can't fly around and take pictures of buildings that don't exist yet. Right. So we had our own, and that's the difference. So we had our own 3D modeling program so people could say, hey, I want a post frame building that has these dimensions and height. I want a bunch of windows and doors and wraparound porches and so on and so forth. And, and then the logic inside a smart build would say, okay, I want to put metal panels on this roof. So here's my preferences. Here's where I want to start my, my uh, placement from. So figure out what the, the cut list links of all those panels have to be. Look at the links available on these trim pieces, figure an optimized cut list on that, and then do the same takeoff for accessories. Figure my, the number of screws, the adhesives, the closure material. So we had a lot of the raw basics in place already, but of course we had a different workflow because now what, we, what uh, Roofing Passport says is, you don't have to model your, your own 3D building. That's the beauty of our Eagle View partner. So all you got to do is type in a street address, and then Eagle View delivers that three-dimensional data. So in that version of Smart Build, the one that fits into, that plugs into the roofing passport, we just grab that 3D geometry that Eagle View gives us. We build our own 3D model so the user doesn't have to spend time building that up. 
And then we take that logic to apply the metal panels and trim and do a takeoff. So we're, 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 we're tremendously successful, Karen, in, yeah. in the post frame end of the business. We're dominant there. We have nearly a thousand users today. And we, in fact, this month, December, we're adding 50 new clients. It's our biggest wow. month ever. So, um, uh, but, but I um, uh, lost my train of thought there a little bit, but, uh, but anyway, so, but the irony is that although our software is so well received in post frame, there, of course, the user has to build up the 3D model. Right. The interesting thing about the roofing passport is it's almost entirely an automated process. I mean, wow. the workflow, when you think about it is, if I'm all set up, I'm a contractor, I want to do a bid. Well, I log into my, comp, my account, I type in a street address. Not very much work, right? Then when my job is ready, the only additional work I have to do is I log into my account and I select the panel I want to apply to that roof to generate the bid. Well, Smart Build does the rest. Wow. So it takes that, let's just say it's a, a 26 gauge, 24 inch wide standing seam panel. Smart Build will take that, apply it onto the whole roof, figure all the cutlass lengths. It'll then figure all the trim pieces automatically. You don't have to wow. tell it what, what kind of a ridge it is or what kind of trim piece it's all been set up. So it figures that out and then does it take off on the other materials. So we're in post frame, you know, a user has to sit down and build that model. It might take 15, 20 minutes. I mean, for a roofing passport job, your total workload, when you're going on that simple path, you don't have to go outside the bounds, so to speak. I mean, you're talking about maybe 120 seconds worth of work. Wow. Yeah. It sounds yeah. like my kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I want to get it done, get it accurate and not spend a whole lot of time on it. I do have a question though, you know, talking about building it out and, and estimates. Um, how, how does that work? I, I, I know in the, a lot of contractors have different pricing with different suppliers and, and, and how does it know? Um, you know, so that you can be sure that that is your pricing and your accurate estimate. Well, the, and, and I'm always very careful when I talk to a client, either post frame or, or for roofing, that they understand what's necessary to set up a system so that it does those accurate takeoffs and it generates the accurate pricing. So high level to begin with, for, for Smart Build to be able to do that takeoff, okay, there has to be a part number database that has all the parts and pieces established, mm -hmm. okay? That has to be inside of Smart Build. So the first, the first order of business is get the part number database. So there's a SKU, there's a product description, there's a unit of measure. When you think about panels, trim pieces, uh, screws, screws may come in bags of 100 or boxes of 250. We need to get that all established. Mm -hmm. And then the next step is we need to put in what I call build rules, okay? Build rules. That, that will tell smart things like, it'll answer questions, for example, Karen, like, okay, when I'm using, let's say I'm using an ag panel that's uh, 26 gauge metal, 36 inches wide, what screw do I use to attach that to a roof? And then how many screws per lineal foot do I use? Those are examples of build rules. So it takes some time to get all that data set up. And then once it's set up, that's why Smart Build can do an automated takeoff. takeoff. Okay. But that data preparation has to be done, okay? So to walk through, it's very important to understand this, okay? So somebody has to set up that data. Well, now the good news is for, for contractors especially is there are two ways to get that data, right? One is that for a specific manufacturer, I won't name names, but you know somebody who manufactures metal panels, sure. we will work with them to get their proprietary product codes, their descriptions, their products implemented and use them to build their specific build rules. Now, once that's done, a contractor who buys from that manufacturer won't have to do that setup. The manufacturer has done that for them. Nice. Now, Roofing Passport in the last year or so, we, we've added a second option, which is for contractors that, that maybe buy from multiple sources or, or just contractors that want to come directly and get Roofing Passport for themselves, we've set up a generic database, okay? So that generic database, of course, the, the products that we have in there, so we might say, for example, rather than a proprietary name, the product description might be 26 gauge, 24 inch wide standing seam. Okay, 
just that generic description. Mm -hmm. And so that, that database has been set up so that if a contractor wants to use that, it's already been set up and they can just stop right into it. Okay. So anyway, to answer your question, the two parts, the first part is that data structure has to be in place. Yes. And for the good news for contractors, they can either go to a manufacturer who has already committed to roofing passport and has set up that whole data structure. And they can check with um, Sherwin Williams to find out who those participating manufacturers are. And we're adding them all the time, right? Uh, or plan B would be, okay, I want to use the generic database. And that's fine. We can set them up either way. Most manufacturers, by the way, will set up their contractor customers. They won't come to SmartBill to do that. But sure. if it's a generic database, we'll certainly get involved and do that. Now, after so one way or the other, now they've got a database. So inside that database, they can then set their pricing in place for those products, the price they want to charge. And, and, and it's very, very easy to do that. And either the manufacturer or smart build, depending on what kind of a database they're using, can walk them through that process. Okay. Right? So there is a cost field where for any of these products, either, either a contractor can enter what they pay for it, or if they're using a manufacturer's database, the manufacturer will plug in what they're charging that contractor. Mm -hmm. okay? Then there's a markup field. And if a, a contractor wants, they can mark up that cost to get to their list price. Alternately, they can just go ahead and type in or plug in what they want that price to be. Okay. But we train people on how to do this. We help them do it. And there are a lot of tools that make it a fairly trivial process to update that pricing. So okay. what does customer support look like? Because, you know, especially if, if someone's new and they're just getting started on the program and they run into a, a, a problem, sometimes it's, they're, they're, it's, I can't find a phone number. Oh, you're going to make me chat yeah. online. What yeah. What's that process look like for the contractor? Well, we try to make it as easy as we can, Karen, and we put a lot of resource in, into having help systems for new customers. First, what we do is we, I just want to emphasize, people don't have to figure things out. You know, when they sign up for Roofing Passport and they want to go, they do have to go through a process of getting their login and their password. You know, not that big sure. a deal. As soon as they're done, we proactively reach out to them at SmartBuild. SmartBuild has the moving parts in Roofing Passport, right? That's where the part numbers are. That's where the takeoff gets done. That's where they can print out their sales proposal they want to send to their customers. They can customize it. So, so that's where the help, um, that's where the need for help exists. So we start out day one by saying, don't, you're not going to have to figure it out on your own. We're going to conduct a training session. And here's the great thing for, I want people to know about Roofing Passport. We don't charge for that help, okay? When people sign up, we always have an orientation meeting. So we'll set up a, a one-hour session to get them going. And then we'll schedule subsequent sessions, literally as many as they want to come back and we'll help them with any part of the system, showing them how to run it, you know, what the more advanced features are, how to put their pricing in place, how to set up their sales contract template. So we, we will hold people by the hand at no cost and walk them through this learning process as we go. Now, in addition to that, we have a, a, a plethora of tools available. We have, I can't even tell you how many videos, um, but we have a, a, a YouTube channel, of course, and we have all kinds of videos that will help people out. So if it's a Saturday or something like that, right? Yeah, you, you can just go ahead and click on one of those, get help. Now, when you're in the program, here's the neat thing. So we have a whole number of help screens and tool tips. So with the software, it's pretty easy, even while you're running the software, to just click on a help and that'll come up and walk you through the various features that you're focused on at that time. And as a final kind of a backstop, here's what we do right inside the software. Okay, So even while you're running it, so you don't have to leave the program while you're there, there's a prominent button that says support, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you're running the program and you wanna ask a question right now without leaving the program, you click on that support button, okay? Up comes a window, it's got a phone number on it. So you can just call that phone number and ask for help right now without leaving that, that job you're in the middle of working on. Alternately, you can type in a note and that note will be sent to our design team. So maybe it's not a question you have to have answered right now. Maybe it's even just a suggestion you wanna make while you have the sure. thought in mind. So if you do that and just type in that note, that gets saved and that creates a support ticket on our end. 
as far as the phone number goes, we have four people in support. So when they, when you call that phone, it will go to our primary support person who will answer the phone and hopefully answer the question. If that person's tied up, it'll rotor over to a backup support person. And if they happen to both be busy at one time, then you might have to leave a message. But anyway, so, so those people are available. And again, there's, there is no, there's no charge for support with what we do in Roofing Passport, not for any of the training, for any of the materials, or for that day-to-day -day, uh, support. It's unlimited. Excellent. So that's what we provide to kind of help people get through the program. Okay. I, I, one more step, because this is great. We've got the measurements. We have all the accessories, the trims, we have the costs. We've got a beautiful 3d model. What does it give me to send to my customer? Like, what does that look like and how you mentioned briefly of, about that and, and the ability to customize. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. Customize is the key word here. Okay. So when it comes to the output phase, we, we give our customers the option to, first of all, we give them a tremendous number of options, okay? So the basic document that you, they wanna put into our customer's hands, of course, is the quote or the sales proposal, okay? So when we set up an account, Karen, we can completely customize what that report looks like, okay? We help them do that. And, to, and basically to edit and create that account, it's just Microsoft Word. So we make it very, very easy. We'll help them do that. They can do it on their own if they want. And we have a lot of help tools, again, that'll walk them through that process. But basically they can put their own uh, logo on that report. They can have their own standard wording, whatever that is, disclaimers of warranty or, or guarantees, terms and conditions, sure. and then whatever key elements they have, what we do on any, and on any bid and any job, we develop key pieces of information. We call them tokens, right? For example, what's the pitch of this thing? What's the street address where it's going? Those are tokens of information. So we help our customers lay out the complete format and the pieces of information they want to create that will be presented in that proposal. We can do things like take snapshots of the picture, the 3D picture of the roof, and they can include that where they want. If they want to include some of the Eagle View data, likewise, we can cut and paste that. So, and moreover, uh, our customers can have multiple such reports. So they might have three or three or four different formats depending on what the audience and the purpose is. Okay. Right. So the yeah. key here is to say you can you can pretty well generate just about any report that you like. Okay. And that typically would be the customer facing report where the sales proposal is there, the tax is included automatically, and that's what they would put in their customer's hands. Then there are a lot of other reports for other purposes. So for example, we generate shop drawings. What do shop drawings do? Well, they can go out to the field and that will actually be a set of drawings. We have one for the complete roof system. And then we can also generate individual reports for each roof plane that will show the placement and the oh, yeah. length for each panel. Really and helpful for the, yeah. the installers, yeah. Exactly. So for the people on the job site, we have that production information available. Then we can generate material lists, right? So those material lists would be available just for internal review. It can be trans. We can customize an output file. So if the, our customer might be a manufacturer, might be a distributor, might be a, a, a contractor, but if they have in-house in -house software where they track this stuff, we can uh, generate a custom formatted file that can be automatically imported and uploaded. So you don't have to sit there having people type data in by hand. Excellent. So we, we can generate that kind of uh, information in a variety of formats as well. So, um, so yeah, they're, they're, when you take a look at our output screen, we have some customers who have 30 different options for output. But again, we try to keep the system uh, really simple. So usually when we set up a customer, we like to do what we call set and forget which just means let's work together to get you set up where you're getting what you want for your business that looks like what you want it to look like. And we'll set that in place. And then you just push a single button, right? So you don't have to go through and answer a lot of questions yeah. when it comes to just your day-to-day -day, day -day standard operating procedures. Sounds like a no-brainer, right? <laughs> if, if you're wanting to add metal to your business or even grow your metal, you know, and, and be more accurate and be more profitable, um, then it's definitely something that th that should be looked into. So uh, if, I, if I am a contractor and I want to know more about how I can get started with Smart Build, where should I go? What should I do? Well, there's there are several places you can go. You can cer you're certainly welcome to come to the Smart Build website. 
And uh, we have videos there. We have a whole marketing screen and we welcome any inquiries. I personally follow up with all the sales inquiries. So if you go to smartbuildsystems.com, you'll find a whole section devoted just to roofing, okay? And there you can, you can investigate and you can just fill out a contact form and I'll reach out to you and, and have a conversation and we'll schedule a, a live session to show you what we can do. Excellent. Wow. This has been really a great conversation. And I hope that um, our listeners have learned as much as I did. Um, you know, technology is just advancing. And I'm sure you got started in 1975. You've seen a lot of changes um, quite a bit through the years. Quite yeah. A bit. And hey, the can thing. I, can I add one more item? Oh, yeah, item absolutely. Under the category of too good to be true. Yes. Because this is, this is the conversation I typically have with a contractor or a manufacturer. A lot of people out there today who, who are involved in metal roofing, who maybe haven't learned about roofing passport yet, are using Eagle View day to day right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and so they're getting a, a standard Eagle View report. They've made the decision that, hey, the cost, this thing is cost justified. It makes a lot of sense. They've done their cost benefit analysis. Here's the news that's too good to be true. And it really is, Karen. So when they sign up for the roofing passport and they get on, I have to explain this to them. And usually when I do, they go, where do I sign? <laughs> because what ends up happening is when they sign up for roofing passport, previously they had an Eagle View report and they're ordering those reports day to day and they're paying for each report, right? That's the way Eagle View works. The news that's too good to be true is when they sign up for roofing passport, now they get all the added benefits that Smart Build brings to them, automating the bid and the takeoff process. And ironically, you know what they pay for that? All they pay for is what they used to pay for the Eagle View report itself. Oh, wow. They literally get all this additional benefit at no extra cost. In fact, the way the pricing works on Roofing Passport is they are charged the Eagle View discounted bronze rate. And so for a lot of people we deal with, they actually end up paying less money. Wow. And they get all this benefit on, uh, you know, in addition to what they Keith, used to get. come on. Now, I was always told if it sounds too good to be true, I know. but I know. wow, that's incredible. I yeah. Yeah, I do. I, I do most of the selling for our company. So I really like having that conversation yeah. when I can tell people, hey, do you like a too good to be true proposition? Because if they happen to be in that boat, then then it's really true. They get all this added benefit and they pay nothing for it. Wow. Now it really is a no brainer. So yeah. I encourage all of you to visit um, smartbuildsystems.com. Um, you can come on to Metal Coffee Shop. Smart Build does have a full directory on there. And we also have additional information about the entire roofing passport program through Sherwin Williams. Um, Keith, it was a pleasure having you on the show today and learning all about your background and your history in the industry and what you're doing today for contractors with metal roofing. It's really, really fantastic. Thanks for being here. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, Karen. Been a pleasure for me too, a labor yeah. of love. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you again. And um, as I said, please visit Smart Build Systems directory or their website. Um, be sure to subscribe to Metalcast as well on your favorite podcast platform and set your notifications so that you won't miss a single episode. And we'll see you next time on Metalcast.